Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Welcome to another episode of the Work From Home Show. This is your host, Adam Schrader, along with Naresh Vissa. We are joined once again by Tom Lewis. Tom joined us last week talking about some real estate stuff. He is the founder of Trammell Crow Homes and T.W. Lewis Company, considered by many to be one of the best home building companies in America. He won many prestigious awards. He was inducted into the National Housing Quality Hall of Fame when he was he was actually the first inductee there. But in 2012, Tom transitioned out of home building and sold that part of the business to David Weekly Homes and is now the author and best-selling book of Solid Ground, a foundation for winning in work and in life. You said in regards to your book, Solid Ground, that you wrote this book because young adults today are getting bad advice about how to succeed, and you want to show them a better way. Um, What advice are you seeing people get right now that's that's so terrible in regards to succeeding? Okay, I'm looking at my book right now, and I think in the foreword, I think I listed about 10 myths that I'll I'll run through real quick and to answer your question, but thanks for asking that, because this is kind of the heart of, of my book. Um, the first myth is that following your passion and doing what you love is the key to success. And I believe that that's a myth and that's a destructive myth that following your passion is bad advice. Uh, it's better to follow your talent. Uh, but the reality is that success is the result of hard work, talent, and persistence and happiness occurs naturally when you help others and grow as a person. But, um, uh, the next myth is that, that, I've heard a lot lately is successful people are just lucky. And I believe successful people use their natural talent, start early, work late, set goals, and keep getting better. I, uh, I have a quick comment about both of those before you okay. move on. So the first thing is, uh, I agree with, with both, but I do have some modifications. So when it comes to talent, I think uh, you can merge your, your passion with your talent. So uh, you should definitely pursue your talents because that's what's going to make you money. But you can then add your passion in there to really create something beautiful. Um, The second thing, I think uh, I think it was Thomas Jefferson who said this, but he said, the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. So uh, (laughs) it's just a kind of coincidence or there is a correlation between just kind of getting yourself out there and working hard and being at the right place and somehow luck just, it just happens, you know, you're not going to find much luck, uh, locking yourself at home and never going out. Yeah. Well, obviously you can't just sit in your basement and, and hope to succeed, but clearly success is about, well, like I said, using your talent, working hard, setting goals and improving. And, and when you do all that, you're right. You know, you get lucky. Uh, but it's also persistence. You know, when you, uh, Thomas Edison said, I have not failed. I've, I've just tried 10,000 things that don't work. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you work hard and you try and you try hard things, that's a key phrase, try hard things, you fail, you have to get back up. You, you learn, you grow, you become more resilient and you're not afraid of trying something again. And now you've you've become uh, a resilient person, uh, so that you know that that's the cycle of success. But but you know to, to go back to your passion thing again. I mean everybody loves to say oh follow your passion. Uh, I'm 70 years old right now. When I look back on my life, you know I've had a passion a different passion every five years. I mean, yeah, from basketball to bowling to, <laughs> to houses to raising children to to you know you name it uh so, so you weren't you know, a professional nba player or did take the the bowling association or anything is that what you're saying <laughs> no i mean I, i'm five nine and a half and i can't dribble with my left hands it, <laughs> it didn't work out for me but so I, I, with some, it, the problem i think today is that kids young people are being asked you know or told to follow your passion and if i was 18 
And I kept getting that question, what is your passion? What is your passion? Oh, it, yeah. would, it would worry me. You know, today, 35% of college students are on anxiety medication. Why is that? I mean, I know we've given scholarships to a couple hundred different kids uh, to go to college. And I, I know them all. And uh, they have so much pressure on them, you know, to get a 4.0, to, to, what, to become a doctor, to find their passion. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's not wise to, to push that, to find your passion because passion, I believe in, in my book, if you read the whole thing, you'll see that I believe passion comes at the end. You know, passion comes through suffering. That's where the word actually came from was the word pathos, which in Greek meant suffering. So you have to, where passion comes from is you, it's like the passion of children. Do you, do you, either of you all have children? I have four. I okay. have one. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. I mean, you, you're you passionate about your children. Why? Because you, you you invest so much of your time and energy and love, and, 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 and there's a fair amount. Of, you get up in the middle of the night, and they're sick, and, you know, and, and, and it's, you are so invested in them that you, uh, you know, you, you have, you become passionate about them. And to me, that's what passion is. It's not like, it's not to be confused with fun. And, you know, I'm passionate about college basketball, but should I try to become a college basketball coach or, or uh, what I, I don't think I'd have been very good at that, you know, and I certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have been a player. So, you know, so, I mean, it's kind of a semantics, I guess, but um, I think finding your talent is a better question or a better uh, challenge for a young adult. Find out what you're really good at naturally with little or no effort. Yes. And then and then work on that and then get better and better and better and become world class at that. And Agreed. You'll be, and you'll be happy and you'll and and you'll be passionate and you'll probably make a lot of money too if that's if that's a goal. Yeah, then, absolutely agree. So moving on to your third, let, let let's go through all ten. These are good. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I've asked, I had a trick question with a lot of our scholarship interviews, and I said, how important to you is career success? And I was trying to kind of measure their ambition. And it, and it got to the point where they, every one of them had the same answer. And they would say, well, it's kind of important, but it's not, success is not so important that I would give up my happiness. So there's some confusion around the word happiness and success, because people think you cannot have both. You have to choose. And, oh, if I, if I work too hard, I can't be happy. So I have to work less so I can be happy. And that's just not correct. You can have both or you can have neither. They're two different things. And so you don't have to choose. Uh, pursue both, uh, hopefully. Um, another one is work smarter, not harder. You know, I mean, uh, that's kind of an excuse to be lazy, I think. Uh, and, and anybody who's achieved any real success would tell you, they have to do both. They have to, they work hard and they keep trying to get smarter too. So um, another one is thirty is the new twenty. You know that's an ex, that's kind of a millennial excuse I'll say to to goof off in your twenties and and rationalize that wasting your time in your twenties won't hurt you, but trust me it'll hurt a lot. And uh, uh, Meg Jay, who's one of the people that endorsed our book, my book wrote a book or several or herself called The Defining Decade, and it's all about your 20s and how your 20s define you. Uh, and you can't afford, you know, successful people don't waste time. So 30 is still 30. And successful yeah, and, people. Yeah, and I've got a comment about that. I, I tell people the 20s are a great time to learn and make mistakes and uh, really get experience. That's what I did during my 20s, not just you know, going to graduate school and uh, working and getting hired, getting fired, working at different places, starting my business. Uh, I learned a lot just through experience. And I feel like now that I'm in my 30s, the 30s are where you can actually apply and you you figure stuff out by the time you're, you know, 29, 30. And you can spend your 30s actually, you know, investing in real estate, starting or or turning a corner to make your business profitable um, and so too many people think the 20s are like, you know, the Japanese, they had that lost decade or, 
you know, they lost so many years. It's like, oh, yeah, the 20s are a time to have that lost decade and just go out, party, have a good time. You can still do that. In fact, I think that's an important part of life. But um, I don't think anyone should go through their lives having a lost decade. No, but, but you're exactly right. Your 20s are a time when you can take risk, when you can move to places you wouldn't move to, when you can fail and learn and grow and get exposure to things and kind of build your root system. Because, you know, success is about building a solid foundation. And that's really what my book is about, is a foundation for winning and working in life. But, uh, you know, in the, but your foundation, you could also call it your root structure. Experience is a big part of that. Your personal character is a big part of that. Your personal habits is a big part of that. So your 20s are when you experiment with a lot of different things and kind of try to figure out who you are and what you're good at and, and make some mistakes that you can learn from. Uh, but you're building your root structure. And then, like in my case, I'm 27 years or six years old. I'm, I've got an MBA degree and I'm sweeping houses might sound like a like a stupid thing but for the then i then i end up owning a large home building company and i employed you know 140 people and half of them were construction people and and i and i could talk their language and i could i understood everything they told me and a lot of things they didn't tell me and so you know they couldn't pull a wool over my eyes and they respected me because i knew what they were talking about and i never done that I never would have really had the same level of respect from my employees because I wouldn't have known what I was talking about and what I was managing. Well, so, what, what's your advice to people who did waste their 20s and are now listening to this episode at home? Maybe they're in their mid 30s or 40s. What would be your advice to them? Well, I think they've got um, they're at a disadvantage. First of all, uh, they, can, they can make up for it. They're going to have to to, to recommit, they're going to have to set goals would be the first thing I would say to them. I would also say they should read my book because honestly, uh, there's some fundamentals there. Uh, I do think time matters, but if you've already, let's say, wasted your 20s or, that not, or not done much with them, you can try to catch up. But you have to you have to focus and set some really clear goals and then put in a lot of time. And um, you can catch up. I mean, it's not impossible. It's just on average, I'd say it's you, you, you're less likely to 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 be real successful. But um, you know, things it, it things, things, There's a lot of different ways to go out here. You know, so um, but but the idea of trying to uh, hit the home run ball, I don't think that's a good strategy. I've known a lot of people that are always trying to hit the home run ball. In other words, looking for the quick, easy way. <clears throat> when I was Right out of college, my parents had moved to Las Vegas, and I spent the summer in Las Vegas. And that was an eye-opening experience. I actually learned to play blackjack pretty well. But uh, this that whole idea of, you know, put put your money on the hard eight and, and hope you get lucky, you know, it just it hasn't worked out that well for just about everybody. So you have to build a solid foundation. And one of my former uh, mentors and role models used to say our goal, and this was at Trammell Crow, is to get rich slowly. Okay. And I and and that always resonated with me. And by that he means, you know, I mean, and that's really what I did. And that's what a lot of people I know had done is they get the, the, you don't get rich quick or you don't get become successful quick. You just you just keep doing the right thing. You keep putting in the time. You keep making good decisions. You take smart risks. You honor your your word. You have you earn a reputation for integrity, and uh, success comes your way. It's like people say, "I'm an overnight success." It just took ten years, or maybe thirty. <laughs> yeah. Unless you, uh, as we record this episode, unless you invested in Kodak stock yesterday, you're up what nine hundred percent today. Uh, it went from three dollars to seventy dollars per share in a matter of twenty four hours. So. If you hit the jackpot there, congratulations. You're an overnight success. But for mm -hmm. the rest of the 99.9 .9 repeating percent of the population, it takes decades, I think, to really make it. 
Yeah, that's one of the articles, types of articles I hate the most. Too. I see them all the time, and it's like, if you'd invested a thousand dollars in Amazon ten years ago, here's what it'd be worth now. I'm like, you guys are looking at this all wrong. Like, what, what, what are you doing today to make yourself rich or better off in, you know, ten years from now? Yeah, and you know, there's so many distractions uh, today that I didn't have when I was in my twenties and thirties. But you know, the social media monster. Is just, you know, how many, I think it'd be smart to try to measure how many times or how many minutes you spend looking at, at things that are largely irrelevant and just kind of entertainment. And they're, they're, the iPhone does that. The iPhone actually now tracks how long you spend. Uh, you can download an app and it'll tell you, it'll give you a weekly report on how much time you waste on Facebook yeah. or social yeah. media. And I've been guilty of this. In fact, I continue to be guilty of this. We live, like you said, we live in a very different time. It's changed uh, really the, the politics, the pandemic, science, medicine. I mean, a lot has changed because of social media and what we have on our phones. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think a lot of it, though, is, 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 is a distraction. And it's a negative distraction. I mean, you know, everybody... Uh, Photo brushes their photographs, and 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 they're, they all everybody's looking so happy on Facebook, and it, it's all really a myth, and it's a mirage, and and you don't, you know, you don't want to envy other people. That's a negative emotion, but uh, I, th I think most people's reaction. I mean, it's, it's it's a fact that the more time you spend on, let's say Facebook, uh, the less happy you are, because you you see all these happy people, and you feel like you're judging your, your mm -hmm. yourself against against fake photos, you know, so you <laughs> become less happy. And, uh, and so why would you do that to yourself? You know? Um, but that's, that's where we are. So, but, um, that's, you know, the reason I wrote this book though, really was, I, th I think there's a, a real issue out there. Uh, I know there is an issue out there with, with young adults trying to figure out what to do with their life. And they've got all this chaos and all these bad pieces of advice, like some of these myths I've mentioned, find your passion, 30 is the new 20, uh, taking risk is too dangerous. Uh, this is the most risk averse generation in the history of America. Uh, and that's one reason this pandemic has caught on so much is everybody's, you know, you drive through McDonald's, the guy will tell you to be safe, you know? So, um, I mean, you know, this is the safest place on the planet right now. We, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but it, but it, what it does is it causes us not to take smart mm -hmm. risks. And if you want the rewards in this world, you're going to have to step out on the thin ice a little bit and take, take some risk. But in my book, there's a chapter on taking smart risk and how to do that and how to be prepared for, for risk and how to mitigate risk. And so, uh, and you learn that gradually by, by doing that. So, uh, so there's some good lessons in this, in this book that are intended for the young adult, uh, to try to help guide them because I think they're, uh, you know, it's, it's a message that, that I think will resonate with a lot of people today. Yeah. Are there any more, um, lessons that, that we may have, or you said you had 10, did we cover all yeah. 10 of them or are there? A few? Oh, there's, there's a few more. Um, <clears throat> Another one is balance. You know, balance is the key to life. <clears throat> That's another kind of a message out there that is, is, I think, accepted that, oh, you should be balanced in family, friends, work. And what that's really, the message is don't work too hard, have more fun, make sure you're not working too hard because you then won't be happy. But in fact, if you look at the people that really accomplished anything significant, they didn't have balanced lives at all. I mean, pick pick a successful person. They've worked their That's absolutely true. <laughs> their, their and they and you know and I was you know what I did was I picked three things: my family, my work, or my company, and my health, and that was it. And so for twenty years, I I was clear on those three priorities, and I just I didn't play golf. I didn't mess around too much with friends. I I was a full time company owner, dad, and I worked out damn near every day. So, you know, you can, you, you can only do so much, but, but, but it's not about balance. It's, I think it's more about focus and about commitment. And, uh, you know, commitment is a word you don't hear very much today, 
<clears throat> most people think, oh, I don't want to commit because that limits my choices. That's another myth. The, the truth of the matter is when you commit to something, let's say a marriage, you now have to make it succeed. You have to figure out solutions. You can't, uh, you can't just walk away. So, and you figure out how to make it work. And, uh, but it starts with commitment. So, uh, you know, there's an old saying, I think it was Woody Allen, that you can succeed 80% of the time if you just show up, 90% of the time if you show up with a plan, and 100% of the time if you show up with a plan and commit. And so uh, commitment is another one of, those, one of those issues. The last one I'll give, I don't know how many I've said so far, is, is resilience. And the myth is that you can build your resilience by taking a class or just reading a book about resilience. Okay. <clears throat> well, here's how you build resilience. You try something hard, you fail, you get knocked down, you get back up, and you repeat. And you keep doing that. And after several cycles, you become resilient. And in addition to that, you become confident. And, uh, but it all starts with trying something hard and failing. So that's how you build resilience. Yeah, it's a very important quality that's too far often overlooked. And you personally, you talk about in your book, you suffered several career setbacks and life-threatening illnesses. How did you overcome them and resilience? Well, you know, I had already, I already had resilience uh, because, you know, as a, as a as a young as a high school student, I, I, I was a hard worker. When I was in college, I, I learned, I really ramped that up with my engineering studies, uh, and I just continued those habits. So, so, I, uh, and, and life was not all that easy for me necessarily. It was, it was good, but it, it had its problems. And so I, I'd been uh, knocked down a few times. <clears throat> and uh, so I had complete confidence in myself to recover from just about anything. And, um, and, and so when... When the housing market crashed in 2007, you know, we just dealt with it. Um, uh, when, uh, you know, when I found out I had cancer in my liver, <laughs> that was probably the worst one. Uh, but I just dealt with that. And uh, fortunately, uh, I got the right immunotherapy and it, it was eliminated in nine months. So, uh, but that, but that is, having a life-threatening disease like that... <clears throat> Uh, now you now's when you really start getting clear on your focus, okay? Or no, I'm I'm sorry, not your focus, but your purpose, okay? So uh, if you if you find out you have stage four cancer, that's when you get clear about your purpose, okay? So so to ask a college kid what their purpose is is kind of laughable, I think. <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't know when you're in college. You don't know when you're 30 years old. You know, you I mean your purpose changes. And ultimately, I think you will maybe when you're in the latter stages of your life, you you'll kind of begin to understand what your purpose ha has been. But um, you find out at the end, <laughs> I think is what I'm saying. You got out of the home building business somewhat and sold that part to David Weekly Homes in 2012. How did you decide it was time for you to take that step? Well, you know, life changes and uh I'd owned the home building company for 20 years. Uh, we had, the crash came in 2007. For the five years after that, we <clears throat> we just ground it out. I mean, it, and it, it, going to work every day was not fun. Every day was bad news, more losses, more cancellations, more firings. Uh, it was just not pleasant. And we were just basically grinding it out. And so I was now... 60 years old and had been doing this for 20 years and I just knew it was time to, 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 to transition out. And, uh, so I found a, a good company, good people, high integrity, good values aligned with ours. And, uh, and we made the agreement and, and I was partners with weekly for five years and, and that, that allowed me a, a time to transition more into philanthropy, which is what I've, I'm really focused on now. And then becoming a, more of a passive investor in real estate as opposed to an active developer. 
Great. Well, Tom, T.W. Lewis, founder of Trammell Crow Homes and T.W. Lewis Company, at one time he and his company, they were considered to be one of the best home building companies in all of America. He's the author, best-selling author of the book, Solid Ground, a Foundation for Winning in Work and in Life. Tom Lewis, do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with our listeners, including anything that you want to plug or pitch? Well, um, I really believe that the book that, that I've written is a message that will resonate with young adults. It's an inspiring message. It's not, uh, I'm not preaching to you. I'm really uh, inspiring you. There's a lot of great quotes in here. There's a lot of great life lessons. It's told in kind of a sto- with a lot of stories. So I think you'll find it entertaining. And I think it'll change your life for the good and uh, give you some good solid uh, principles to follow no matter what you're doing or what your, what your goals are. So anyway, uh, it's, on, uh, it's in hardback, it's on ebook, and it's on audiobook. So uh, Solid Ground, Foundation for Winning and Working in Life is my uh i'm very proud of it yep and people can get that book solidgroundbook.com that's solidgroundbook.com it's available like tom said on audible amazon itunes barnesandnoble.com it's everywhere solidgroundbook.com and if you want if you want to find out more about tom tw lewis visit twlewis.com that's twlewis.com So, Mr. Tom T.W. Lewis, thanks for joining us on the Work From Home show. Uh, We've had a couple of awesome episodes with you talking about real estate, home building, investing, and just overall business and life success. We appreciate it very much. And to all our listeners, visit our website, workfromhomeshow.com. That's www.workfromhomeshow.com. Get on our mailing list. We all get a lot of nice free goodies if you get on our mailing list. If you have any questions, hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com if you want to reach out to us with a comment. Leave your five-star review or one-star review, whatever you want to leave for us. Leave your review on iTunes or whatever podcasting platform you utilize to listen to us. So take a screenshot of that review, send it to us, and we'll send you something free. We like giving away free things here. And until next time, keep on working from home.